the development of Wallgorgo was really closely aligned to the sea. It was very isolated, uh, so the only way that the people had to communicate with the, the outside world was, was basically by sea. And it needed a way of getting its produce, you know, its, its timber, its corn and, and sugar cane to the markets in Sydney more easily. And because there weren't many roads, the sea was the obvious place to look. It became quite a busy place and what we have today is, is quite a few artefacts still around on the beach, on the rock platforms and around the town. In the early days, goods etc were, were, were taken out to sailing ships through the beach, through the waves and that was quite dangerous because it could damage the, the products so then a, a number of jetties were built. There was one built out over the rocks at Woolgooga Headland, another smaller one was built just near the current boat ramp and then there was a government built jetty and that really facilitated produce etc being brought into and out of Woolgooga. The Maritime Heritage Project under the Marine Estate Management Strategy is a project to try and tell people about maritime heritage so that they can help protect that heritage themselves. Maritime heritage is all about the way that people use the water, the way they interact with it. So um, maritime heritage can be piers or jetties or wharves, uh, it can be shipwrecks like the buster that we've got behind us, but it's also the relics and the artefacts associated with it. The buster was a timber sailing ship, three mast and bark and team, which was built in uh, Nova Scotia, Canada. It sailed up to Woolgooga to take on timber piles to be taken to Dunedin and the seas started to rise, so it put out anchors and tried to ride out the storm. But the anchor chains and the, the ropes attaching it to the buoy parted and the ship was washed onto shore. And every now and then, most of it is, is exposed and you can see all of the ship, including the sheathing on the outside of the ship. And the people of Woolgooga see the buster as part of their history and gives them a, a sense of knowing where they came from and a sense of belonging. I suppose I first came across the buster about 40 years ago. Uh, so I was going along the beach and a couple of friends of mine who lived here told me the story on it. When it was uncovered last month, definitely had more tourists and people interested in it and looking at it and poking around than I've ever seen before. Timber was initially brought down using bullock drays, but around about 1900, a couple of large sawmills were constructed and they built railway lines and they used steam locomotives to bring timber from the, the surrounding forests down to the sawmills where it was cut up before being loaded on ships. William Pullen's uh, first, first jetty was built over the rocks on Woolworth Headland and there are a number of piles which are uncovered from time to time and then there's a number of holes which are cut into the rock and there's a number of iron rings used to hold the timber down onto the rock. Some old newspaper reports indicate that logs were rolled down over the headland across that jetty out into the ocean onto waiting ships rather than going through the surf zone and uh, possibly getting wet and destroyed. The main government built jetty, a lot of that was lost during storms and then the piles were blasted out of the sand. If you find anything from a shipwreck, um, because they're protected under legislation, you should get in touch with Heritage New South Wales who managed all these types of sites like the buster behind us here up and down the state but it's best to be left on the beach where it is the safest place for it.